right, I'm going to divide the paper here uh, just a little bit up here at the top and then we'll go right here so with washes um, you know we're dealing with wet wetness okay we're dealing with either wet paint on dry surface wet paint into a wet surface and we have to be sensitive to the results we're going to get we have to be sensitive to how dry the paper is when we're applying paint into the surface and so on and this is a tricky thing probably one of the more challenging aspects of the medium for beginners and even experienced artists okay so uh, i've got the brush clean uh off camera i did exactly what i said i was going to do so i wet the brush i get all the pigment off and I give it a tap tap those things are happening off camera again I can't show everything but just know that's what's going on so what I'll do now is get clean water and I'm just going to pre-wet this area right here now um, I can go back and forth up and down you know it doesn't really matter uh, just avoid things puddling up so try to make it consistent um, so if you think you've got too much water down here and it's starting to puddle up, then just dry your brush off. You can give it a tap tap on the sponge and just run it side to side. And that's going to extract. Okay, water does go uphill. And it's going, as long as the bristles are drier than the paper, it's going to sponge that water off the paper. But if your brush is too wet, it still has a bunch of water on it and you're trying to do it, then chances are it's still going to go that way because the paper is drier than the bristles. So that's sort of how that works. So now if I wanted to go in here and I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of water here. And I'm just going to apply a wash. Now if I want that nice and even, I can just work it back and forth like this. I can go one more time it's not going to hurt anything but now as it starts to dry and that could depend on uh, where you're at in the world um, so if you're in a very damp area uh, I'm in Virginia it's summertime it's very hot but it's also very humid so that humidity is going to slow the drying time uh, if you're in a dry area you know Southern California the desert or whatever then that's going to dry much quicker but when it's wet it's going to have a certain sheen to it and all so you're going to you know have to become very familiar uh, with you know timing of things so if this is pretty wet see i can go right back into it now and i'll go with this sort of reddish brown i can go back into that and it's going to blend and i'll get what's called a gradation okay so the gradation you know starts a little bit darker and then gets lighter as it goes downhill now it can stay light and go dark at the bottom it can the gradation can move left to right it doesn't matter but when you're applying into a wet surface like that so long as the the original wash isn't too dry uh, you can go in and with a darker hue and do that uh, this is also considered a variegated wash so not only are we getting a gradation but it's also variegated because we have two colors. We have sort of a, a light yellow ochre and then we had have a darker red brown. So if I were to clean my brush off and then let's say we'll go get into some ultramarine. Well, I can go into that again uh, with here and just let that blend right into it and then the blue is going to bleed and blend into the brown and the yellow underneath so the reason you're not seeing a nice clean blue there so there's the color by itself you can see how crisp and blue that is is because watercolor is transparent and it's and whenever you're painting wet into wet those colors are going to fuse and bleed into each other. Um, so if I wanted that more blue, and I'm like, oh man, uh, you know, I really was hoping for a nice blue, you know, area up there. Then you have to ask yourself, well, why did that happen? And that's because you're 
blending the blue into the brown therefore it's going to make a gray now even if you put that over the brown dry it's still going to get a little bit gray so you're not going to get that crisp blue and that's again because watercolor is a transparent medium so what we're going to do now is work into this wet wash a little bit more so in watercolor there's three mixes you have to be familiar with um, the first one i put down is called tea uh, you may hear artists use different lingo or whatever descriptions names but it's all the same thing so a tea mixture basically is i'm gonna put some water down here is where you have very little pigment with a lot of water and the results are a really thin weak transparent wash now again that's tea now the second color i put down was uh, what i consider milk so milk is a little bit thicker but it's still a little watery so if i were to take some of these browns and ochres and mix into this okay what's going to happen is that's going to get a little bit thicker and if i run my finger through it it's probably going to separate a little bit and now it's all absorbed so it's not going to let me do it but that is a little bit thicker mixture and it's going to be a little bit darker in value than the tea and it's going to be a little bit less transparent uh, the top mixture the blue was milk as well so I, I used a little bit of water and then a little more paint than I would for the tea so that's still what I consider a milk mixture the third mix you I use I tend to only use this uh, towards the end of a painting and that is uh, what I call honey so if I take a damp brush and I tap it off so it's wet but it's not dripping wet and I go into let's just get keep it simple we'll go with the blue and I put that down so it's going to be very very tacky okay very thick so we have very little water and a lot of pigment and I were to go down into this um, that thick paint is going to hold its stroke a little bit more than the milk mixture and certainly a lot more than tea and typically you can use thicker paint into a wash that's starting to dry and it will not get that cauliflower ballooning effect so let's look at what i'm talking about here so now that was honey now if i take that same blue and i put a lot of water into it let's say and i get into this sort of tea milk sort of mixture now what's going to happen is there's a lot more water than there is pigment so what's going to happen is that water is going to bleed into that wash and it's going to start to create the cauliflowering that you typically see and that's important to know right so thicker paint thicker paint into you can apply thicker paint uh, into a wet wash and you're not going to get that sort of cauliflowering that's just the way it is now if the wash is starting to to sort of set or dry and you're losing that sheen and then you go back into that with a tea or sort of milk mixture then you have to know uh, that's going to bleed and you're going to actually um, you may ruin the wash unless you're looking for that result and that to me uh, is a very important thing to understand about watercolor painting uh, so how wet is the paper if it's wet and you apply another color into it it's going to bleed so you're not going to be able to control it because you're dealing with gravity and you're dealing with fusion and, the, and it's going to mingle how it wants to mingle now you can tip it and cause the wash to run a certain way but it's still going to give you that sort of bleeding appearance now the thicker the paint 
the less disperse dispersion and bleeding that's going to happen but the thinner the paint the more bleeding is going to happen and the more risk you're running of creating cauliflowers so you just have to know this about watercolor painting